Hey YouTube, um, I just thought I'd um, I'd share a few hints and tips when it comes to putting one of these uh, DSO 138s together. Now I've, I um, I look at the forum on the JTEC website. Sorry for my shaky hands, just for a second. I'm just trying to get some off this camera, off the back of it. Um, I looked at the forum, and there's all sorts of people have all sorts of issues with putting these together, but. I've found that generally, 99% of the time, these these boards are fine. Um, so I'm going to hear a few little tips that might just save you some time while you're doing it. And I'm going to put this camera down into them. Not such a shaky, um, shaky place. <coughs> Basically, not in my hands. So here we are. Okay, right. The first thing is. It says in the instructions that you want to um, test all of these with a meter. Now I think that's a ridiculous thing. In some ways I suppose it makes sense, but it's a ridiculous thing to do. Especially if, especially if you're busy busy making these things. All these are populated, all these are done, these boards. Uh, I, there's a few people have asked me for them and there's also a, I do a little bit of charity work. And, and some of this is going off youth center well oh, let me just get that set up so and so what I thought I'd share with you is uh, a few of the few of the tips with these now these are the sort of things you want to check is like the, the little switches there should be eight pins there and I know my camera is not very good so it's gonna find it hard to see but there are eight pins there so I chuck that in there but on this one there's one missing now if you put this together you can see the one that's missing on there sorry i've been doing my garden today so my nails a bit rubbish now uh, i think you can see there's a pin missing there that will ruin your day because by the time you get round to putting this on you would probably spend the time putting the smds on the surface mount devices and then you'd have put your resistors on then you'd have put your capacitors in and by the time you've got your your ceramic capacitors in that's when I would say then you want to put your switches in probably before you solder the ceramic capacitors that means you can put the board upside down do all your soldering and the switches are stopping you from pushing down and bending the capacitors and you know all sorts so check these because that can uh, ruin your day that, that one I'm going to talk with the distributor about and because I've got some spares of these but the spares that I sent off for have all got longer so it's going to be an odd but i do have a couple of boards that i had a problem with solder it was a um, terrible solder especially good solder but it turned out to be rubbish and it ruined ruined my day on a couple of boards anyway sorry put that out of the way now with the smds i see a lot of people suggesting that you should solder the pads first now, i don't think you should do that in my experience i tried one and all it meant was I had a right pickle trying to balance the SMD on the bit of soldered area. It, it was a pain. So what I found is you just use some flux. A really good flux. I use this stick here. I just dab it in. <clears throat> As you can see, look, well used. And this I only use this flux for these boards really. A little bit of flux, and you just put it on the pads. Do we? Put them on all of the SMD pads, all of them, including the um, including the chip and the uh, voltage regulator there. Put the SMD, put the um, uh, little smear of the flux on all of these, and then you can place. Starting off, you know, you get a you get a little list like this. So I'd start off with a 10k. And normally, what I do is I have this sat here sit it here and I find my little screw it, you know my 10k I know I need six of those so I tip them out here and I can start placing all, all the SMDs get everything placed on the end on the SMDs uh, before you start soldering and I normally find it easier to have my soldering iron here right here of course I got my little cleaning um, here rather than use the sponge all that happens with the sponge is 
some people say they like the sound of it but if, if you're into the sound of it okay fair enough but if you want to keep the same temperature pretty much of your iron and use it enough straight away once you've done this I would use one of these because this doesn't affect the temperature too much it does slightly but not as much as a cold wet sponge um, <clears throat> and then yeah so then soldering the SMD take your time I normally go down one side first on everything everything that I can get down one side then I'll turn the board and I'll do the next side and I do this every time like this now um, I'm going to ballpark it, but over 50 of these things I've built. And then once I've done that, I start I start with the resistors. Now this is why I decided to make this quick video, because, <clears throat> because it's, it's at this time where... What have we got stuck in there? Transistors, I'm going to get rid of that. And then the resistors. Now I'm lucky, I've got one of these meters here and this meter here comes with these babies which means it's very easy for me to just drop my resistor in there i get to see what the value is i look on here and i get to see where i'm supposed to place it there. i'm so shaky what is wrong with me all right let's put that down oh ship on wires out of the way so we don't just run away <clears throat> okay so and if I put my iron down there, I wouldn't normally have hauled these boards here. I've just, I just I just put these boards here so I could just, just show you that there's a whole bunch there. These are these are all made, they're all tested. Um not calibrated yet, the screens aren't on. And I'm just like to shift them out of the way because they're gonna do my DVD in there. <coughs> I didn't make the bag of biscuits that were underneath. <coughs> so and and this is what I find really really useful. When you're when you put in these uh, resistors in, as you can see, some of the resistors have more than one. Always go from the number. So if that's, so let's say that's R8. So find R8 on here. Find R8 on the board. And, and put it in. What's happened to the light? And then the next one is R12. Don't, don't find R12 here. Don't be looking through this for R12. But as it comes up, that's a diode, we're not going to use that, but as it comes up, you know, if you've got one of these, that's great. It makes life a lot easier than trying to do it with a normal meter, uh, putting the wires on, the probes, <coughs> putting the, the probes on. Uh, and then let's say if I've got R8 in, and the next one turns out it's uh, R8. So basically, yeah, uh, um, put them in an order. You know, don't. Um, you can only put them in in the order that you put them out on here. But with the capacitors, I tend to go for the ceramics first, and I put all the 100 nanofarads in. They're the bigger ones. Put all the 100 nanofarads in. Apart from 10 and 11, I tend to leave one of these out just because of the way the the pins bend so i put the whole lot in first all the capacitors not the electrolytics just the ceramics all the capacitors in after i've put in the inductors you've got three inductors you've got two diodes i put those in directly after the resistors um and then the capacitors all the 100s in and again with that um because the 100 start with c1 c9 i pick out 100 i put in c1 next one c9 not c1 and then c20 and then because then i don't know what i'm looking for i know that if i pick up another 100 and i've already done c9 i, I look on here c9 is done i'm then looking for c14 uh, c10 or c11 or c14 depending on which one's next so you don't have to keep oh where did i get to where did i get to and that's the same sort of theory as for the resistors put them in in an order and just keep yourself going without order and it will make your life a lot easier doing it like that um, and then you know once you've got the, um, the inductors in the, the ceramic capacitors are in put the, the transistors in the, the um, transistors the, um, we've got voltage regulators we've got positive and minus uh, it's the 79 LO5 is the minus and 78 LO5 is the, the, the positive the positive get these in the um, 
S, I think it's 8850 goes there, and the, uh, and the other one goes there, the 14, I can't remember what it is, but that goes there, and if you do that little sequence, um, once they're in and you're ready to solder, I would also put the switches in, I just press them all in, of course you've checked these already before you started, because if one of these is knacked, if there is a pin missing, it's not going to work. Um, but I'd check those first, I, w I wouldn't try and check every component works first because that's impractical, they even say that on the JTEC website, uh, that they don't check that, they just check that the board has not got any faults itself. Um, and then put these in, make sure that none of the legs are bent, make sure they're all nice and straight because if you either get it in and you've got a bent pin, that's a pain to get it back out again, if you solder it in and you've got a pin that's not in properly, that is enough. To give you a bit of a stress out because it's going to be a blooming pain in the backside trying to get the solder off and get it out without damaging anything so just check these first make sure you get these pins in nice everything else is pretty much easy enough um, if you're building it for yourself the usb doesn't actually do anything at this stage so you don't even need to put that in um, but if you do what I find is it's um, I warm the inside once it's pressed through. Check the pins on these as well, because if you do want it in there, and if it ever does become useful in the future, you want to make sure that you haven't got any bent pins here, and then put that in. Heat up. I heat up the insides first, and then I just put the solder on and just roll it across the top until it gets a nice connection. And that's the same for these as well. A lot of people struggle with these. I've seen some of the um, the bigger name people on YouTube who have built one of these have said that they've not bothered doing the ends because the ends are a pain in the backside. But if you do the ends before you do any of these pins here, it does make life easier. It really, really does. And if you warm, get your clean solder on, clean tip, and if you warm the inside first, make sure that's nice and warm, get to the outside and have some solder on there, and then you should find that that makes a connection do the same each end first because these are normally dead easy sometimes there is a pin that doesn't solder that well and you do have to have a little bit messing around and it's probably quite good if you're armed with one of these solder suckers because at least then if you do get a big glob across and you can't just keep cleaning the tip and drawing it back out again cleaning the tip you can warm it up and you know suck the loud out and, and do it again so I'd say that's a really good investment as a solder sucker. Um, ignore. Let me just get. Where is that bag of these things? There it is. There's another one. Ignore the. Um, there's a whole bunch of been sent out with. Whole bunch of been sent out with this note. Now I already did a video. I asked if anybody else knew anything about the note, and no one said anything. That note itself is a mistake. It says, "Why have I got the shakes? What's going on?" Um, it says, "Errata." Well, that means error, I believe. Uh, J JP3 and JP4. Uh, in the notes, so they're basically it's saying don't solder these. But this is actually the error. You should be soldering JP3 and JP4, and you don't solder JP5 and JP6. Okay, so if you get one of these, just ignore it. Never put it in. <clears throat> I don't know what they were on, but they, uh, that, that was a big boo boo. I've confirmed that, even though I had to tell them. Even at JTEC, they sort of. They, they were, it's a language barrier, slightly. And um, it still had some confusion, but. Like I said, all of these kits that I've built over the last couple of days, they all had the error, but I've sold a JP4, JP3, wherever it is, JP3 and JP4, and they all work. I did try not doing that, and I tried the other side, JP6 and JP5, and it didn't work. No good at all. You just have a blank screen. It lights up, but nothing happens on it. Unsoldered it, soldered these two, and it worked fine. So just ignore those. Those that are in there. Um... And that's about it. Oh, and another thing, yeah. 
I uh, see so yeah, people struggle when it comes to these pins that come through from the, um, the, the, the connector here. Now normally, what because I've had some errors with these things, I tend just to solder this. I solder this and then I test it. If it all works, then I'll get on to soldering these because it can be a bit of a pain. But again, if you heat around this side first, get that nice and warm, glow across the top, heat this up and get the solder on you'll end up with a nice ball on here every now and then a bit might go onto there don't use a soldering iron trying to get it off just let it cool down a bit and just flick it off me now and it will go okay it'll be nice and clean there still so let me just show you a quick video look 16 minutes and you can get these it's nice and easy to get these but it makes it a nice good connection and of course that's not gonna it's not gonna pull out or or, or do anything uh, and toward there also for these when you're putting these in these headers or when you're putting these uh, the insert parts here the males um, I find that it's good that if you've got something um, that's incredibly dirty sorry but just place them in put that across the top which means you can turn the whole thing over and place it down without them moving you've still got the pins sticking through and you can just do one one on each same on here one on each and then turn it over have a look make sure it's lined up if it's not just put your fingers under line it up make sure it sits flush same for these twist it slightly if you need to once it's warmed and then get the second piece on simples nice and easy and of course with your electrolytics if you save one of the like the longer leg when you cut it and then you can use that to make your hoop um, for the uh, for the test uh, the test frequency the one kilohertz test frequency yeah I think that's about it and yeah don't solder these little LEDs too long you can kill them quite easily um, that's it that's it I think I covered just about everything there mm, yeah so well if you're doing these I wish you all the best of luck and well you shouldn't really need luck these are yet to be cleaned once I do my SMDs I tend to use a little bit of alcohol to just clean the board with a brush I use what I call a yard a yard broom toothbrush. Um, these are like cheap toothbrushes, uh, general toothbrushes, I believe. Um, it's not the same as one I got. My normal toothbrush has got like like, like ten thousand bristles, but really, really fine. But I use one of these um, to clean this up. Not with all the components on there, just with the SMDs, just to get rid of the flux out of the way. Using the alcohol, brush it out of the way. And there you go, got a nice clean board. And when I finished. Um, well, I'm just doing this batch first these 10 and then I'll clean the whole lot before I calibrate and put the screens on um, the screens I tend to keep one that's made up so I don't have to make each screen for each one I just keep one that's made up so once I've got it I can just test it um, of course I do my voltage test first across the ground to the 3.3 volt that you should see coming out of this um, I check that I've got my 3.3 volt once I've got that short out where you're supposed to do three and four um, and then I put the extra bits on like the USB I then solder these bits I, um, I then put this uh, this other uh, connector in for the power because I only use this one to start off with yeah and that's it and you should have a pretty easy time with it and I don't know, well you won't be able to notice but every one of my resistors goes in the correct way around so you should be able to read all the resistors all the capacitors you should be able to read from this angle well you can't even see that you should be able to read from this angle like I said all the resistors are in the correct way around so you can read from left to right um, and that just makes sure, it gives me, it makes sure I place them nicely um, as you can see on that board everything's placed beautifully and it is, everything should be running line. Oh, I say that. Oh, no, no, it is, yeah. I was going to say it looks like the, the um, crystal might be slightly off, but it's not actually, it's perfectly in line. It's just the way the shadow was hitting it. And that will um, make for a really nice, pleasing, 
pleasing to look at board. So, anyway guys, if you got that far, if you got any more questions about any problems with these things, um, I've managed to get through quite a few. I've actually fixed a couple as well that were um, not working correctly. Uh, one had just like loads of rubbish going across the uh, screen and it turned out there was a, a problem with one of the capacitors on um, C10, C11. Um, yeah. I hope, any, if, I hope if you're going to build one of these, as you've found some of these tips helpful. Uh, these, when you put these um, variable capacitors in, I suggest you just put one in, you have a little bit of solder on, on the end of your thing and just keep your, your finger on the bottom. Only give it a second or two. Just get it so it just stays in place. Make sure it's nice and in place. Do then one next to it, you know, do a pin two of it, then go out to pin one. Do the same thing when you put the next one in, just hold it in with your fingers. A little bit of solder on there and just get it so it stays in place make sure it's nice and level and do that i'm sure most of you will know all these things anyway but for those guys out there are thinking about building one of these but think it might be a bit of a nightmare um i think i've pretty much covered just about everything on there these are they easy you can do this once you've got the switches in um, and it's literally just put it in turn it over like that push the board down make sure you got one pin through a little bit of solder turn it over put your finger on and then you can, on the bit that you've got on, just warm it up, let it clip into place so you know that it's all nice and firm into place. A little bit of solder there, a little bit of solder there, and then just gently solder the lot on. And when it comes to soldering, less is more. Not big blobs, don't need big blobs. Just need a little tiny bit of nice solder on there. And it's all good. You see the way I've done these lot? Like I said, I just warm up the inside. Um, and then just roll the soldering iron across the top. You should just warm up the inside there so that's nice and warm and roll it across the top with a little bit of solder and you end up with a nice little little tiny blob on each and then you just do the little tiny bits there you don't really need it because this doesn't actually do anything as far as i can tell from the jtech thing uh, jtech website it's just there for future use i forgot to mention when it comes to solving these Again, the same as um, you know for the male, for the female side. Just pop it in, put a, put a little tiny bit of solder there. I don't know what your solder's like. This is quite good. There is a little tiny bit of spit can come off it. So what I tend to do is when I'm soldering, um, I just stick a little bit of card across the top, and I always solder the row closest to the screen first. I start up one end I start this one um, I just peg it into place both sides make sure it's not in nicely and I go from the, the left hand side because I'm right handed and I do the next one to it I don't do it so then I've done part of one side part of the other because then you can end up bridging which makes it a pain if you just go down blah 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 like that and then do this this part closest to you um, it just means you're going to get in less of a pickle and if there are any splat bits that come off um, I know there's a little peel off screen cover here but if it is going to go out to somebody it's a lot nicer if there's no splat on that before they peel it off so you just place a little bit of card over the top um, and that keeps it good and when I form the um, when I form the uh, just trying to see what I've got a bit I chucked out out all the bits I had in here. Um, but if I just get one of these electrolytics, and if you can just imagine, I just take the and I just bend it around here. Literally, just bend that around so I've got my shape off the bit that's cut off. Um, and then that's what I use for the uh, for the hook for for the test signal. I just form it around there. So if you've got a solder sucker, that comes in handy for a couple of things. So. We got this far cheers for watching if you've got any questions stick it in the comments and i will gladly if i can help you out cheers guys bye